Hey guys, JPA Trades here, and as I talked about early on Twitter, I said I was going to go over what is theta decay and also how to determine what the cost of options should be. So I know a lot of you guys are either new to day trading or new to investing, so I'm just going to go and assume everyone knows nothing and just go over with the blank definition. So what is theta? So theta is, the term theta refers to the rate of decline in the value of an option due to the passage of time. It can also be referred to as the time decay of an option. Theta is generally expressed as a negative number and can be thought of as any amount by which an option's value declines every day. So basically what that's saying here is if you buy an option and it goes and the price of the stock doesn't move, your option's going to go down by a little bit each day. And as you get closer and closer to that date, it's going to decline faster and faster. So that's shown in this chart here. So an option with a lot of time as soon as it gets written it's the clients very little so it's barely moving down as it gets the first month it's active the second month it's active but then you once you start getting around the halfway point of the options life it really starts to ramp up that decline so it's a parabolic decline it's not a linear down it's not if it costs a dollar then you have it for 10 days it goes down 10 cents a day it ramps up once you get close to that expiration. And on my Twitter feed, I primarily work with weekly options. So I went and I just made a little rough estimate here on what I'm trying to go through. So here's the options contract price here, like a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday. So I like to pay about a dollar for my option contract price. The first day, if the stock price doesn't move, you might lose five cents, 5% 5 decay rate, not too bad. Tuesday, option price, the stock price still hasn't moved. That 95 cents loses another 10 cents on it. So now that day it went down 10%, so speeding up a little bit. Wednesday, about the halfway point in the week, you might lose uh, a little bit more. So it's going to get hurt going into Thursday. So now it's 75 cents, so a 23% decline, 25% decline. Then that Thursday overnight holding to Friday, if you get a flat open, if you don't get the exact perfect move, you're going to get that crush in the morning. And that's why you often see me either not take a lotto play on Thursday night unless there's the perfect setup. Because if, if you don't get that good setup on a Thursday night, you're just going to get fried Friday morning. And that's why you'll often see me wait till Friday opening morning, Friday first 15 minutes. Th those options are getting crushed in the opening of the day. And that's how you can get those super crazy rate of returns. If you can go pick up some contract that's just the theta has been crushed on it because it didn't get the bounce the other person was waiting for. That's how you can get those real good fills to really get that big rate of return. So how much should it cost though? How do you know what a good price is? So what I like to think of it as if you go to the grocery store every week and you want to go to the grocery store to buy apples, if an apple costs you a dollar every time you're there, you, you think to yourself, all right, an apple should cost a dollar. If you go to the grocery store one day and an apple costs two dollars, well, you're going to say, oh, these apples are overpriced. Uh, I'm not really that hungry for apples today. I'll wait till next week and see if the price comes down a bit, and then I'll, I'll, get, myself some app extra, I'll get myself an apple. But what happens if you go to the grocery store one day, apples are 50 cents. You go, well, I might not even be necessarily hungry for apples today. Maybe I'll buy a couple extra and just or maybe I'll focus on eating more apples this week because I'm getting a really good deal. So it's all about your time in the market. You want to be in places that you know and understand. You don't want to be guessing on random stocks to say like, oh, I think it's in the right place. You want to keep that list of stocks really concise. So that way when you go and let's say you learn how Apple works, you see, oh, well, Apple the stock, it's contra, it's, let's say it's at 180 or one. 82.50 call straight in for a dollar. You're like, hey, that's a pretty good deal for Apple for this week, knowing how much it can move. Maybe I should get myself some Apple calls this week. It's if at a, it's if, if it's at a level I like. So that really all ties back to trade what you know, know what you trade. You don't really see me playing a huge list of names on my Twitter feed. You see me kind of sticking to my core, core trading names. I I'll stick to the Snowflake. I like to do. Google sometimes. I like to do Facebook sometimes. I, I used to do Snapchat a lot. I, d I didn't want to be trading a hundred different stocks. I want to try to trade 
like 10 names, 20 names, but I don't want to be like 50. I don't want to be 75, 100. I don't want to be that real high number. I want to try to keep my number of stocks I'm trading short and concise so I can really understand how much those contract prices should cost and how much theta is going to bite me. And once you can keep that list small and really know what you're trading, that's what will help separate you from other traders in the market. So I hope this got, helped you all and I'll see you next time.